slideshow. Slideshow. No, 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 not slideshow. He presented you. Hi guys. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a presentation as interesting as that of Andrews or Christophs, but I promise to make it as interesting as possible. Um, also, at the same time, I do apologize. I first and the only time I gave this presentation was in 2011 um, for a class of mine at my university. So I hope that I still get some details right. Otherwise, expect me to be referencing a few things in my paper. So you might see the screen flickering from time to time. But anyway, hi guys, my name is Josh Lim. I am the secretary for Wikipedia Philippines. I am a student at the Ateneo de Manila University, majoring in political science. I am graduating this March. And this is a paper of mine called The Wikipedian Condition, Analyzing the System of Social Relations on Wikipedia Through Political Lenses, which I submitted for a political theory class in March of 2011. Now, I really hope I do this right. Uh, anyway, so as the internet spreads and becomes part and parcel of our personal lives, it is inevitable that it becomes more representative of the collective human condition. I remember reading a quotation, which if I remember correctly was in, um, which if I remember correctly was actually published in the Wikipedia Revolution. It says that the dream behind the web is of common information space in which we communicate by sharing information. That was actually a quotation by Tim Berners-Lee, the founder of the internet. However, there was a second part of the dream too, dependent on the web being so generally used that it became a realistic mirror or in fact the primary embodiment of the ways in which you work, play, and socialize. One thing that I have learned in my philosophy classes this year in the Ateneo is that increasingly, or at, not in my philosophy class actually, in the class that I'm taking called, uh, what do you call this? Um, yeah, it, it's a cyber culture class, is that increasingly, the way that we live our lives offline is increasingly being reflected in the way that we live our lives online. Um, we can see that where before, where we use the internet for very professional things, sending emails, exchanging academic information, so on and so forth. Today, we all love going on Facebook. And I admit I use Facebook a lot, despite the fact that before I stopped, I did not use Facebook. Um, as you can see, we went from this, you know, the text-heavy interface, nothing on it, to this. And this is 2011 Yahoo. Imagine Yahoo today, where it's even more graphics heavy. And of course, that does not, it's not only reflected on, it's not only reflected on the internet outside Wikipedia, but even on Wikipedia itself. Wikipedia, in fact, is one of these grand products of the internet as we know it today. And in fact, Wikipedia as a social experiment gives us the opportunity to see how the community works in ways the internet has never thought it would. If we're called to imagine a world in which every person is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge, and that's what we are doing, well, I bet, you know, we're doing a very good job at it. And we all deserve a pat in the back for actually sharing knowledge. However, as a, um, as a Wikipedian coming from a country which is, you know, not which does not fit the, um, the stereotypical Wikipedian. I'm not white, I'm not, well, no, I'm highly educated, but I'm not white, I'm not from a Western country, I'm not wealthy, well, in relative terms. We, have to see, we also have to concede that Wikipedia system of social relations is breaking down. And as someone who has seen this firsthand, as someone who has tried to get Filipinos to either to start editing Wikipedia or to, you know, to bring back editors for edit, um, to edit again, we have to question why is it that the system of social relations is breaking down, why is this the case, and what should the community do about it? And that is where my analysis of what is happening on, with the community from a political standpoint comes in. So I actually, in, this, in, the, um, in the course of this paper, I had two arguments. The first argument was the tendency of the Wikipedia community to self-atomize. Um, despite its collaborative nature, undermines the community-driven uh, community ethos of the encyclopedia and allows for the general deterioration of inter-editorial relations. So in short, it's that, yes, we are one big community, but we tend to go do our own little individual things. And I will admit I am also guilty of that. I like to write things about the Philippines. Normally, I only write about things involving the Philippines and don't go beyond the general community. The second argument is that this new environment generated by the community self-atomization has rendered the Wikipedian, particularly new arrivals, unable or unwilling even 
to fully exercise his or her potential in improving the encyclopedia or participating in community functions wherein, you know, normally you would participate because by virtue of being a Wikipedian. So I actually have three major theorists that I used here. Um, I used Hannah Arendt's division of labor and atomization and the formation of homogeneous masses. The first was discussed in her book, The Human Condition. The second was discussed in her book, The Origins of Totalitarianism. The, third, the second theory that they used is panopticism and disciplinarity, as talked about by Michel Foucault in his book, Discipline and Punish. The third, which is more minor, is normalization in the state of war, which was discussed by Michael Hart and Antonio Negri in his book, Multitude. So on the first part, of, so let's ask first, on the first part of my, uh, of my paper, which is called The Changing Face of, the, of Community Dynamics, whoops, self-atomization for self-preservation, I was actually recalling a quote that was originally posted by Jimmy Wales on his, um, on his Wikipedia page, and I forgot where exactly I found it, but it said, Wikipedia's success to date is entirely a function of our open community. This community will continue to live and, live and breathe and grow only so long as those of us who participate in it continue to do the right thing. Now, doing the right thing takes many forms, but perhaps most central is the preservation of our shared vision for the neutral point of view and for a culture of thoughtful diplomatic honesty. So essentially, what we're be um, the reason why we are so successful today, um, well then and even now, why we are so successful today is because we are open to talking about things, we are open to each other, and we have this general recognition that we are all doing this together, and we are doing this for the sake of um, improving, you know, we're doing it for egalitarian ends. We're not doing this because we're being selfish. Now, the labor that builds Wikipedia will not be realized to solitary effort. While work and labor constitute, and Hannah Arendt says that while work and labor constitute activities of the private realm, wherein work and labor is something that you normally do in your spare time, essentially, action can only be realized in the public sphere and as such, while all aspects of human activity will be influenced by interactions with other people, action can only exist within the realm of interaction. Essentially, the only way that we're even able to realize what we're doing here today is if we're actually interacting with other people and that you cannot just simply do things by yourself. However, as I have noticed um, in the last two years since this presentation was made, I have noticed there is a Wikipedia in the Philippines. It's the Ilocano Wikipedia. And it has one editor only one active editor, and apparently today it is successful. It has about 7,000 articles, and has a depth factor of 40 plus, which is, even be which is actually the best of any Philippine language encyclopedia. However, in general, that is an exception rather than the rule. The rule being, we cannot do what we're doing unless, for, unless, we, know every, unless we know each other in this room, or that at least we meet online and do these activities while actually talking to one another. This, in fact, reminds me of one of the videos that was produced in Haifa in 2011, which I hope I can play for you guys right now. If you have knowledge, why you must keep it by yourself? You must share it. I think... I hope I remember this that the purpose of this website didn't say website, didn't say wiki, didn't say internet, it just said free knowledge for everyone in their own language. When a community is open, it's really made of those who, who dare taking this invitation. And this is an invitation. Of course, you don't have to take an invitation, but it, there is an invitation out there in an edit button to say, come be part. What you know is as important as what we know. You know, you're giving education to people, and not just any people, but the whole of the world. So I feel great by contributing to an encyclopedia that is accessible to virtually everyone in the whole world. It's just making yourself happy by helping others, that's it. Because I want to be happy, I help others. You're working together with so many different people from so many different cultures and uh, it's just amazing. The thing about it for me, what it's really about, it's just really sweet people. Uh, you know, we've got all these really sweet people who are just they get online and they're typing and instead of yelling at each other or just having a conversation or reading about gossip or whatever, they're trying to build something that everybody else will find useful. I just think it's really sweet, really nice people.
So as we can see from that video, there is an emphasis on Wikipedia being built by people. In that it's not actually just you know sharing information, but rather the only way that you can get that information out is if you build a strong community. So the question now is, what kind of community does Wikipedia seek to foster? In um, in the uh, excuse me. In the in light of my research, while I was making this paper back in 2011, I was kind of thinking, you know, I don't really know how to describe what the Wikipedia community is like. So I am, so I have, you know, I was, I had to borrow a definition, but in this case, it's actually a very apt definition. Um, it was, uh, oh, here we are. Essentially, Andrew, who's in the room today, described, yes, I used your book, of course. Um, describe the Wikipedia community as a stigmatic community. Of course, as you can evidence by this group of ants, yes, this photo is on Commons, trying to make a home by trying to, these are, they're stitching leaves together to make a home, essentially. So they are, so basically, you're building on previous work rather than, oh, here we are, previous work rather than direct communication upon builders induces and directs how the wasps perform additional behavior. And essentially, we have, in uh, in the Wikipedia sense, we have we we have one big project, but it's kind of like you don't just really stop there. I would like to say it's like the Tower of Babel, but I'm not sure if that's a very appropriate analogy because yes, you're building up to the heavens, but I'm not sure if that's the correct analogy to use. However, the Wikipedia community, at the same time, as I've noticed, is not only building upward, it's and outward. It's also um, as we grow. You notice that we're starting to compartmentalize because it's the only way that you're able to um, ensure quality on the encyclopedia, as I'll discuss later on. For example, yes, you have a core called Wikipedia, but then you are divided into, but then you are divided as to where, let's say, where you want to communicate, how you want to participate. Some will choose to write on mailing lists. Some will choose to subscribe to mailing lists within mailing lists. Some will choose um, will choose to participate in mess in notice boards and will want to engage Wikipedians with discussions on certain particular topics. I, for one, am a regular on the Philippine notice board. Others will want to work on wiki projects because these are the special um, these are the specialties that they have with respect to writing content on the encyclopedia. Now, in general, division of labor is good. Division of labor, in fact, is the best way to ensure an optimal product for an optimal product for your end users. However, while division of labor is good and allows for the furtherance of action, as Arendt, um, as Arendt alludes to in the human condition, this is also an example of the balkanization that has swept the internet. People isolate themselves, quoting Jody Dean, within bubbles of opinion with which they already agree. So what happens is, yes. It is a good thing that we are dividing ourselves and specializing ourselves so that we can improve oh, this little part of the encyclopedia, which probably other people will not touch. However, as we continue doing that, what happens is we isolate ourselves from the community. We just tend to, you know, we keep to ourselves. You keep to your little circle of friends and not really go out there, which in fact is a very big problem with Wikipedia the way that I see it today. However, it does not help that this division and this balkanization is compounded by the fact that you have Wikipedians who feel that you know they're not welcome. The panopticon does not feel does not make them feel welcome anymore. Um, I have no, I have heard from Filipino Wikipedians who have told me that they feel that you know they don't want to go back because they feel that their work is not appreciated simply because some administrator 8,000 kilometers away in the United States says your work will be deleted because it's not notable. However, um, as the panop... The, ah, ooh, okay, so the panopticon, as you can see here, yes, you have the central tower, you have the compartments, you have the person watching everything that you do. However, Wikipedia is more than just the panopticon. Foucault conceptualized Jeremy Bentham's panopticon as a power structure whereby individuals within it can be effectively monitored by a person located in the center. Those imprisoned in the panopticon do not know that they are being watched. And my professor, who is a Foucault scholar, mentioned that disciplinarity is in fact that it's most powerful when you do not realize it. 
when the disciplinary structure, uh, when you are unaware that the disciplinary structure is watching over you, yet the disciplinary structure is watching over you, then it is most effective. However, Wikipedia is not your typical panopticon. Wikipedia is not, you have an administrator watching over users, or you have Jimmy Wales watching over all of us here today at Wikimania. In fact, it is editors watching one another. We're forced to look out for one another, obviously because we feel that we have a collective responsibility to ensure the success of the project. Therefore, the better analogy to use to describe Wikipedia rather than the panopticon is in fact a giant house of glass. However, this sort of regulatory role that this division would possess under a normal panoptical setup, as you can see oh, in this picture, you know, exists as an afterthought to the entire structure of what Wikipedia is. We never really envisioned Wikipedia to be panoptical to begin with. While the structure may seem to be built in the manner that a panopticon would, most members of the community would probably have never thought of Wikipedia's belief in transparency, because we do believe that we should look into each other's work, would necessarily translate into something that resembles a panopticon much more a giant house of glass. And so we are, and so you do have people who look into each other's work, and at the same time, it's not that I only look at the work of people who are within my little compartment or my little partition, but then, but then you're also looking, ah, you know, if I'm going to be possessive of an article that I'm writing, you also have to look at this other person's edits. Eventually, that will progress into something um, that could progress into something more. You might become, uh, you might end up monitoring recent changes and so on and so forth. Essentially, reinforcing the this, um, reinforcing this sort of disciplinary um, environment that Wikipedia has essentially perpetuated because we are emphasizing the need for quality. Now, ah, now as mentioned, of course, the. We have started shifting towards a partition community, and we do risk stifling some of its revolutionary features, and inevitably, we change the dynamics of the community. We were an open community before. I came in in 2005, and I was very happy that Wikipedia was this very open, welcoming community. I was welcomed by um, a Filipino Wikipedia who is here today at Wikimania, and I still have a large degree of respect for the Wikipedians that I have met in my early years. In on my early years on the project, of course, including everybody here today. Um, the problem, however, is that as we've scaled, we have been forced to impose rules. We have been forced to impose measures in order to control our interactions because we cannot let things run amok. And of course, it is perfectly understandable. However, uh, um, you know, in the name of maintaining quality on the encyclopedia, however, that had an unintended consequence. It became inevitable, therefore, that Wikipedians had to retreat to their comfort zones as the environment around them began to change, as we became, as we started emphasizing rules, as we started emphasizing procedures, as we, as we started emphasizing, you know, good behavior. Then it became inevitable that you know I don't want to go out there anymore. I might as well just stay in my little bubble and be comfortable with the people who already understand me. These are people that you normally work with, your little close-knit circle of Wikipedian friends. At the same time, it became inevitable that the community had to self-atomize as Wikipedia grew larger in order to maintain the encyclopedia's quality. I don't necessarily have data as to how many, let's say, how many Wikipedians in this part of Wikipedia will work on something else or whether or not there will be cross-pollination of ideas coming from two separate Wikipedia communities. However, in, uh, excuse me, however, that's essentially what happened. You end up just sticking to yourself. And this is particularly evident with other language Wikipedias. Other languages, you know, they feel that there is no need for them to go beyond, um, to go beyond to the larger community because they feel that the larger community is so bewildering that they decide to stick to their own little bubbles. Of course, we have, we have to remember that small organizations, that you know, all our, everything here today runs on relationships. In the Philippines, all of your interactions run on relationships. And therefore, you, know, you only start regulating these relationships when you have a lot of relationships that have to be managed. Um, it was also mentioned in the Wikipedia. Um, it was also mentioned in the Wikipedia Revolution that you know, citing the Rova's fourth law, purport policies continue to grow in both quantity and complexity in proportion to organizational growth. That is true, until the policies no longer work. At which point the policies remain in place while the organization reverts to running on relationships. This 
in fact, affirms Arendt's theory that somehow, as we build the totalitarian state, not saying that Wikipedia is a totalitarian state, essentially, you are, um, you are isolated from everybody else because that's the only way that the, um, that the totalitarian society, the disciplinary society, necessarily works. And so you maintain these systems of relationships, these policies, but you end up reverting to more informal relationships within your little bubbles of opinion with which you agree. That is probably the reason why, out of frustration, we have this very distressing list called Missing Wikipedians. And in the Philippines, we have quite a number of missing Wikipedians, and I have tried to talk to them. You know, some have not contacted me, others have told me their stories. Yes, some are busy. However, some are busy, some have moved on with their lives, but others just generally feel frustrated with the way the community has acted towards them. There is a Wikipedian in the Philippines around 2006. His username is Emir214. He had a very big vision for the, for the Filipino Wikimedia community. And to this day, I regret the fact that he did what he had to do. He ran amok and eventually was blocked on the English Wikipedia to this day, he is still blocked in the English Wikipedia. A couple of years ago, I've expressed in Wikimania, I want to see him unblocked. I'm not sure if he will, if he'll ever come back, but God forbid, he will. Now, the thing there is this. Wikipedians are united by altruistic goals, but the systems of relationships is increasingly turning into a toxic one, at least online, where users don't communicate and are increasingly isolated from their peers, simply because we feel that, you know, there is no need for us to go beyond, there is no need for us to go out there and say hi to the next Wikipedian that you see. Because you feel that, you know, oh, this Wikipedia might be the next Wikipedian who will revert my work. And that is obviously something that we do not want to see as members of the community. But the question is this, has it become necessary for Wikipedia to self-atomize in order to preserve both the social cohesion and that has defined its community of editors and the stature that it has attained as an internet resource. Is it not possible for us to, you know, continue being this one large monolithic community that we've always been since 2001, but at the same time ensure that the four million articles on the English Wikipedia plus the other millions of articles on all the other language Wikipedias are also maintained to a reasonably high quality? The best example that I can think of with this analogy is Metro Manila. Metro Manila has one, well, you know, we all love to say this is just Manila. Yes, Manila is only one and a half hours away from Hong Kong by plane. However, in fact, Manila, if you're from Manila, is not Manila. Manila only refers to that little small piece of land that you see there that has Manila in the title. The airport is actually located in Pasay. Therefore, you say, oh yes, I'm from Manila, when you're outside the Philippines. When you're in the Philippines, you say, no, I'm from Pasay, I'm from Quezon City, I'm from Paranaque, I'm from Valenzuela. Similarly, on Wikipedia, we, kind, we start seeing the same types of behaviors. You don't just say, I'm a Wikipedian. But you also say, no, I am a new, I am a new changes patroller, I am a recent changes patroller, I am, an, uh, uh, I, am a, I am an admin, I am a bureaucrat, I am a writer for the Wikipedia signpost, I am a contributor to Wiki Project Emo, so on and so forth. And so it is not sufficient to analyze, but then again, it is not sufficient, however, to analyze Wikipedia system of social relations solely from a community standpoint. We need to analyze the role of the individual editor in shaping Wikipedia's social environment because anything that we do as a community ultimately goes back to the editors. That leads me to the second part of my presentation, which is the sovereign editor, a victim of preference. Uh, of preference. Now, building on the image of the panopticon, it begs the question, has Wikipedia succumbed to disciplinary structures? We would like to say, to an extent, probably, we, may, we have, of course, dealt with the fact that as we've grown, we've had to build policy, we'd have to make sure that the quality of Wikipedia is paramount. I was in Darius's talk yesterday with respect to Big Brother is watching and how we have grown in terms of the number of policies that we have on Wikipedia and how we have essentially become even more disciplinary. We've been monitoring people just so that you know, we can assure that they're actually watching the policy, um, that they're observing these policies. Now, in how Wikipedia works, it is mentioned compared to other online communities, Wikipedia is unusual, and conventional wisdom holds that online communities tend to grow to a certain natural scale. And in fact, Wikipedia is unusual because we've contradicted these statements wherein we have grown much 
more beyond village scale and we did not fail. You know, many organizations have grown beyond village scale and collapsed. Luckily, we're still here today. However, the question is, is that existence wherein we are, where we are today, necessarily the way that we want to be? I mean, yes, we are still a community, but when we scale, does it mean that I should call myself this or I should call myself that? I don't think that this is necessarily the most appropriate analogy. Yes, of course, I have to use Wikipedian. I don't, you know, we're not just commons users, Wikipedians, I think this is Wikicode or Wiktionary, I'm not sure. Um, or, you know, Wikinewsies and the like. We are still Wikipedians at the end of the day. But the thing there is, we are forced to go to these little bubbles. Now, the question there is how the, and of course, because Wikipedians are sovereign. Um, Wikipedians have the right to exercise these types of choices. And they have the right to do, well, essentially, what they want, of course, within norms of behavior which are agreed upon by the community. Now, the question there is, how does one exercise sovereignty on Wikipedia? Hold on, why are my notes not coming out of here? Oh, yes, no, here we are. So how does one exercise sovereignty on Wikipedia? One exercises sovereignty on Wikipedia by improving the, by doing what he, he or she normally does. Every edit that you do on Wikipedia, every photo that you upload to Commons, every news article that you write on Wikinews is a sovereign action. So essentially, you have millions of sovereign editors contributing to Wikipedia, to the Wikimedia projects on a regular basis. They do choose to, um, they choose, excuse me, okay, they choose to make these contributions at the same time, they also choose whether or not they want to go beyond the simply just editing and joining the wider community, wherein their sovereignty is subsumed into the wider sovereignty, that, uh, which is that of the community. Arendt mentions that you know totalitarian societies work in that manner. You have your sovereign. Eventually, your sovereign is subsumed into a greater sovereignty which is the community where that sovereign person resides in, and then eventually you are atomized as the totalitarian society establishes itself, but you do not have your sovereignty. Your sovereignty is still maintained with that of the, um, with that of the, ty of the tyrant. And so the question there is, is it necessary? Um, yeah, so the question there is, have we gotten to that level wherein we have become atomized, we have given up our sovereignty as editors in the name of the grand totalitarian disciplinary society. I remember I was, as I was finishing this presentation this morning, um, yes, well, right here in front, I remembered, I actually remembered using an analogy on second system effect. And the most appropriate image that I could find, this is an image of the Bataan Death March in the Philippines during World War II. The reason for that is because you have to question. Second system effect is defined as having a beautiful, agile system, which eventually its successor is an uh, elephantine-laden monstrosity. The question is, are we an elephantine monstrosity? I don't think so at the moment, but it seems to me that we are getting there and, the politi and using political lenses. It seems to me that we are indeed getting there. So the question now is, finally, is Wikipedia becoming too bewildering for the use of the typical Wikipedia? Does the Wikipedia editor who wants to join the community and say, hey, I want everybody to, you know, I want to be part of this greater community of editors feel that, you know, I thought it was rain. Or is it rain? No. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah feel that, you know, hey, I want to join the community, but at the same time, you know, I don't think I should anymore. It looks too scary. I don't think that I can live up to the expectations of the community. I mean, the best example that I could use for this was, I remember when I was, in, when I was you know, undergoing my RFA in 2009, and then I was reading RFAs in 2012. Oh my God, look at how the content has gotten more, mon has gotten more monstrous since then. Now, while the culture is still more or less the same, the direction in which the culture is leading is one that can be a cause for concern. As Wikipedia becomes more bureaucratic and more disciplinary, people will increasingly get lost in the structures that were built supposedly to make things easier. 
in at the time that this presentation was made, I was contacted by a Malay Wikipedian, and he was con a Malaysian Wikipedian, and he was concerned that you know with the EDP drama and people were saying we must delete all non-free images on the Malay Wikipedia because we don't have an EDP. And the one who was saying that was a very active user on Commons, who is not from Malaysia. My, the name escapes me at the moment, but he was concerned because he didn't know that they needed to have an EDP. So the question, um, he didn't know that these communities are required to have these bureaucratic structures. And in many communities, um, particularly those in the developing world, we don't care whether or not these policies exist. Many editors would simply just say, I want to contribute to Wikipedia. I don't care about copyright. I don't care about the foundation. I don't care about how the foundation is run. I don't care about Creative Commons or licensing. Yes, more people may participate in vote, um, in referenda, which have a direct impact on the projects, but more people simply just do not care and would prefer that, you know, let's just get work to working on the encyclopedia. That, in fact, is something that is lost in the discussion. We tend to do things, we, we are very bureaucratic to the point that other communities just simply don't care and they ignore all the bureaucratic overtures that come with, the, um, that come with uh, being part of the community. And so they, you're just left to their little bubbles because at least there, the structure is informal and they can do what they love to do, which is writing Wikipedia. So, the, so to close this presentation, I do say, yes, it is getting there. We are becoming a very bewildering um, project for people to use. Wikipedia of 2004, 2005, 2006 is certainly very different from the Wikipedia of 2013. Now, can we do anything about it? I most certainly think we can. However, it is not my right to propose these solutions, but I will close my presentation. Yes, this is a CC BY SA Philippines licensed presentation. All the images are licensed under CC BY licenses or CC BY SA licenses and are available on Commons, except the screenshot of the Yahoo user pages. Thank you, and I will now take your questions. Are there any questions from the audience? Maybe, yes? I wonder if it is not the fight of the Wikipedia that we cannot control the contents of Wikipedia, especially concerning historical events. Now, there it is the various or even opposite you know, perspectives among countries involved. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that it is not possible, if it is possible to control the quality of the contents, so how about just uh, letting a variety of perspectives well, the thing there is, we are supposed to show these multiplicity of views. That's the reason why the N that's the reason why MPOV exists. Now, whether or not policy directions skew the um, the portrayal of certain events in favor of one set of events or the other, that's another question. I do think, though, that we just have to sit down and talk about these things. Often, what happens is that we end up with lawyering, we end up uh, discussing these matters and throwing policies around so that we feel more superior when in fact that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be sitting down having no-nonsense discussions on content, but instead what we're doing is exactly the opposite. Yes? I was thinking, okay, you... You were painting like a negative picture, and also by using like uh, you know panopticon and all that. But uh, on the other hand, I was I think that's like two directions uh, we need to work on. Mm -hmm. One is uh, you said in the beginning that uh, after ten years, Wikipedia and the whole internet becomes like normal in the real world. You know, it's not like another world, yes. it's a digital world. So what does it mean? It mean it could mean what two things. One, we have to accept the rules of the real world, of the old real world, or our rules we have become part of the real world. And I think is what we do as Wikimedia is the second thing. 
you know, we fight for our data, we fight for uh, copyright changes and all this. Of course, the, the, the single Wikipedia doesn't have to care about that. It's like, it's like you said in Manila. I mean, there's maybe a baker in North Manila, and he just wants to, or he, she just wants to make the people in North Manila happy by making good bread. Mm -hmm. But there's also the mayor of Manila, and he's not, or she's, I don't know, for, for the he's or she. Um, it's a he. It's a, all right, he's in charge of taking care of the whole of the Manila. So by, but now Wikimedia not having a hierarchy, uh, some of us are, feel more attracted to make the big thing, and some feel more attracted to write good articles. Mm -hmm. So, but there is, uh, at least in Germany, is a little um, miscontinuity. You know, people writing articles say, say, why are we should we take about politics? And I'll say, well, because if we don't take care about politics, politics will take care about us, right? We, we cannot go from project to project, from article to article. We have to change the framework. So this is like the outer reach. The mm -hmm. inner reach uh, is your colleague, uh, uh, the pundit, called yesterday about the bureaucracy inside of the Wikipedia, which means destroying uh, a heartful, lovely atmosphere inside of Wikipedia by making people sad by saying like, oh, you don't know the rules, so you cannot write. You go home and learn 1,500 rules before writing the sentence. <laughs> so exactly. So I, but I, I have no solutions, because I only see that this is a big, uh, I have the feeling, because I'm not that long in the community, that the outer reach, like fighting for another reality, and the inner reach, showing, asking ourselves, how can we improve and make these non-hierarchy togetherness a little bit more filled with empathy. I don't know, and this is like the two things I can see, mm -hmm. and they appear again in, for me in, in your talk, and I'm, I'm really looking forward, not talking about the negative things, but we take these challenges, the inner and the outer challenge, and try to find a solution there. Well, you know, we all want to come up with these solutions. I guess the only thing we can do is sit down and talk about them. In 2010, when I first participated as a representative for Wikimedia Philippines at the Chapters Conference, I came up with an idea. Can we have a, I don't know, a charter of good behavior on Wikipedia? What is expected of all Wikipedians that all Wikipedians should abide by? And I guess, you know, the expectation that good behavior now is increasingly defined by your knowledge of policy or good behavior is defined by who you know, is not sufficient. We need to have a rubric by which all editors are, or all community participants are equally judged before the law. Uh, it's not a law, but you know, that they're equally judged. And I guess if we're really dead set on wanting to improve things, then yes, by all means, we should talk about it. We have to talk about it. Any other questions? Is it time already? All right, just if there's no more or what exactly? <laughs> All right, if there are no more questions, thank you very much.